Hello again, this is Cheryl Nathi, here to do another lesson with you in poetry. I'm going to teach you a form today called the Pantoum. Imagine living in a culture where every 150 years there's a great drought. Now on the other side of the nearest mountain is an oasis and there's plenty of water and people can survive there. However, this culture is in a time when there were no written words, there was no alphabet, there was no pencil or pen or typewriter. And so this form, the Pantoum, is called an oral heritage poem because it teaches the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the people who are aware that beyond the mountain there's a beautiful spring. It teaches them by using a trick or a hook. Sometimes you get a song stuck in your head and you keep repeating the rhyming chorus. That's called the hook. In the pantoum, repetition is what keeps the poem in your mind. And the hook is repeating certain lines. So what they did was created this oral form and taught it to their children and their grandchildren. Just like we all learn stories about um, Ring Around the Roses or the fairy stories that we hear, the fairy tales that we hear, they remember them. So when the elders who know about the situation pass and maybe generation passes, the children of those people still have in mind this form, the pantoum. What the pantoum does is it repeats the even lines on top of the odd lines. So a pantoum is 12 lines. The first thing that you do with the pantoum is you write up to the number 12. Then knowing that the even lines repeat on the odd. I always, line two is the first even number that will repeat, and that will be on the first odd number, which is five. And so I always put a little star, uh, some way to remind myself that this line is already taken, and I don't have to come up with something new. So the pattern is lines two, four, six, and eight are repeated on lines five, seven, nine, and eleven. And I'll read this one to you as an example. The black horse ran so fast, the wind was jealous. Line five, the same as line two. Ran so fast, the storm was jealous. Now, you'll notice that line seven is line four. So, the black horse ran so fast, the wind was jealous. Ran so fast, the storm was jealous. Forever, the storm, and this is line nine, which is odd, and so even line six fits on top of it. The storm, the wind. Now line 11 repeats line eight, which was forever, forever jealous. And I'm going to read you a couple of examples of the pantoum. What I'll do is erase this example, but I will keep the numbers so that you can see when I read the words where the lines repeat. And all of these poems that I'm using as an example of pantoums were written by students from the fifth to the eighth grade. And so, well, actually, fourth graders, too. So if they can do it, you can do it. So here, uh, here's another example, and this is one I think is very funny. It was written by a fifth grade boy. Line one, black Tron aliens take, line two, over the earth. Line three, they eat all the candy, line four, and do not say please and thank you. Remember line two? We're going to repeat it on line five, over the earth, line six. They fly sky high. Now remember, 
Line seven is repeated from what line? If you guessed four, you're on the money. And line four is? And do not say please and thank you, which is not very polite. Over the earth they fly sky high and shoot lasers. Now again, on this line, we have a repetition from line six, which was, which is not very polite. Then they leave in a rude, exciting attitude. Here's another pantoum. Remember, the pantoum has 12 lines. The even lines repeat on the odd. So I always mark the odd lines because I don't have to make anything up for that. I just bring something down. The wind blows through the trees. Repeating line two. Blows real soft. Repeating line four. The trees. The blue grass. Repeating line six. Real soft. Line 10 is. Line 11 repeats the blue grass as it touches my face. Now this is a form that seems a little intimidating at first because it's got 12 lines and it's got an order to it. But once you start, it uh, becomes very easy. Once you get rid of the math anxiety, it becomes really fun to do. And uh, it's important when you're doing the pantoum to remember that you want to write about something that continually moves on rather than sequences. Because if your line two says, I took a shower, then down here by the time you've gotten dressed and gotten on the school bus and you have to repeat, I took a shower, then it just doesn't make sense. And I don't really believe that poetry has to make sense. I think poetry, more importantly, brings the feelings of the heart out onto the page and shares it with other people. So you don't have to worry too much about sounding like a newspaper giving information because poetry also gives feelings. I want to ask, are there any questions? <laughs> but I know you're there, but I can't hear you. So instead, I'm going to read you another pantoum so that you can enjoy the rhythm and the power of this form. Because birds glide across your brain, I rise into the shadows and the mist is rolling in because my breath is rolling out. I rise into the shadows like a pond that went to sleep. Because my breath is rolling out, you hear doorbells in the woods. Like a pond that went to sleep and woke up inside a dream. You hear doorbells in the woods, though the woods are in your dream. And woke up inside a dream, though the air is filled with blue and white clouds through the woods, though the woods are in the dream. A good idea can smell like pine trees. Although the air is filled with blue and white clouds, I am filled with ideas about dreams. A good idea can smell like pine trees, and a dream can grow like a cloud. I am filled with ideas about dreams. The stars don't know what they mean, and a dream can grow big like a cloud. You can't explain this bigness. The stars don't know what they mean, and the mist is rolling in. You can't explain this bigness because birds are gliding across your brain. Bye for now.